Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, folks on my team uh, know I, I, I try to start things on time so that we don't punish the prompt and those that uh, join us a little bit later, uh, they'll join us in progress. Um, just let me say this. Uh, I am so excited about this evening. I just want to welcome everyone and thank you for joining the call. Uh, my name is Samori Pruitt. I'm Vice President for uh, Community Affairs at the University of Alabama, and I serve as the chair of the uh, Realize the Dream Committee. Uh, members are a part of the committee. Members are from uh, University of Alabama, Stillman College, uh, Shelton State, uh, Tuscaloosa SCLC. Um, and we exist uh, to put programming together um, that seeks to address um, social uh, justice issues and issues of equality, inequality and equality. Uh, the committee was formed a long time ago, uh, back in 1990 as a concert uh, and it's grown. Um, we now have a banquet, uh, we have a lecture series, uh, we have a performing arts uh, series. Um, and during the concert, we've always had art in the lobby. Uh, the concert's been held at, uh, on our campus at Moody Music. And I won't go back too far in terms of uh, previous concert artists, but I will give you a sense of some of the people who we've had here. Uh, for some of the younger people, you, you may be familiar with uh, Jonathan McReynolds, uh, Kirk Franklin, um, John Legend. Those were some of our more uh, recent uh, uh, guests for our concerts. In terms of speakers, uh, we've had um, Maya Angelou, um, Cicely Tyson, um, Harry Belafonte, uh, we had Danny Glover, uh, John Keonis. Some of you may be familiar with the show, What Will You Do? He was one of our uh, speakers. And I've had some great uh, uh, lecturers. This is the first time we've done an arts and essay contest. And um, I think you'll hear from some of the judges, but all of us were absolutely impressed with the submissions. Uh, and we were trying to do something this year, given COVID and we couldn't meet in person. And so we thought of this and um, the committee, all of the committee hadn't heard this yet, but as chair, uh, as a result of these outstanding uh, submissions, I'm going to recommend that we grow again in terms of activities and that this arts and essay contest be a permanent part of the activities connected to this group. Um, I just say to you young people, thank you for showing us what we've been missing. And we are really looking forward to, to hearing from you. Uh, in the correspondence we've sent out, uh, you will receive a Chromebook and we have budgeted $1,000 to your school uh, to support programming like this uh, in your name. And so our plans are to actually schedule a time, work with your principal and counselor to actually come to your school, present you with the Chromebook, and we're gonna do a large blow up $1,000 check just so the school knows they have those resources toward these, this type of program. Um, it's just been a pleasure and we just look forward uh, to many, many more years uh, to come with this. But first things first, we look forward to hearing from you tonight. But before I turn it over uh, to some others, uh, I want to thank um, the judges. You'll hear from some of them uh, from, and they're all from uh, UAA and uh, University of Alabama, Shelton State and Stillman as well. Um, uh, some of them will be moderating. Uh, we, you'll hear from one of our committee members, one of our newest uh, committee members shortly from Steelman College, Dr. Wheeler. Um, and you'll hear from them. And but before, again, but before I completely turn it over, I've got to introduce one other person. Uh, and I, I'm glad she was able to, to, to join us. Uh, she has always been someone I could reach out to when I've had some ideas that I thought would 
benefit children and families. Uh, we left uh, an event earlier this evening uh, around our Parent Teacher Leadership Academy. It's, uh, it's trying to support children and families uh, through increased parental involvement. And we've been doing it about 12 years. She helped me with the curriculum for that initially. When, uh, when, when I talked about doing this, she uh, provided the rubrics. <laughs> Uh, and when the work came back, she was like, this is outstanding. We know we're going to post this on the website. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd love to send some suggestions to the students so that they can make their essays even stronger because folks from all across the country, uh, we have a lot of traffic to our website. So a lot of people will read their essays and that's Dr. Joyce Stallworth. Um, Joyce, I didn't, um, I didn't ask you to prepare it to say anything, but I know you're on the call. Uh, and before we just kind of turn it over to the, the next uh, part of the program, is there anything you'd like to say to the students or anyone? Good evening. And thank you so much, Dr. Pruitt. Of course, it's always an honor to be engaged with the programming that you do from your office. You have been steadfast in your efforts. You've been collaborative and you have always put students families and teachers and schools first. So I thank you for all the work that you've done. Please forgive, I'm just gonna leave my video um, picture up. I am down in the woods down in South Alabama and uh, sitting in a house with very uh, less strong uh, Wi-Fi. So I might have to leave before we're finished, but I just wanted to say to these outstanding uh, students in our school systems, thank you for the privilege of reading your essays uh, I completely enjoyed them, and I'm so glad that you are sharing them with us tonight. So, Dr. Pruitt, thank you for your work, thank your office, and thank everyone that is involved in this tremendous effort. Thank you, Dr. Stallworth, for joining us and, and for all that you do. And with that, I, I will turn it over to uh, Dr. Wheeler, who will continue the program. Thank you so much, Dr. Pruitt. Good evening to everyone. I'm Dr. Jesse Wheeler and I'm the chair of the Art, Music, and Language Education Department here at Stillman College. One of the goals of the committee is to educate and keep Dr. King's dream relevant to not only the current generation, but all generations that follow. And as Dr. Prude was mentioning, we try to achieve this in the committee through a variety of programming. Now, we've all been through a pandemic and it's put on pause the ways that we do things normally, right? So the traditional face-to-face -face event uh, had to be changed. And as I look at all your faces, I know that we're still gonna manage somehow to connect across this, uh, this technology here through these screens. And part of that's the power of the event itself and the strength of your words and the beauty of the art that you all created. That's gonna make it possible. So we've identified new ways that we can continue this important work. And uh, I'm so thrilled about this essay and art contest. And as Dr. Pruitt said, we really want to continue this for every year at this point, because this one has been so successful. For those of you who don't know, the contest was an opportunity for middle and high school students in the Tuscaloosa area uh, to submit a 500 word essay or an artwork that reflected the 2021 theme, which is realizing the dream through justice for all. And for all is really for me very significant because as I look at your faces, I see how different you all are. And you know, sometimes when we're learning about history, we see these icons and we forget that there were people of all kinds, of all ages who were part of the movement. And then there are these iconic photographs that means so much, right? They were so significant in the movement. We forget that there's all kinds of artwork out there throughout the civil rights movement. And up until today, that's part of this activism. And we hear the iconic speeches, but we don't hear the hundreds and thousands of things that people said every day, every month, every week, every year as they were on the marches and they were talking to one another in meetings. So it's really significant that you all found your own voice and you, you gave us a chance to hear it. 
And as, I, as, as Dr. Pruitt said, when we were reviewing the submissions, we learned that we have some incredibly talented writers and artists in, in the area. And so this means that this group of students, that all of you, like your heroes, are trailblazers. So congratulations from all of us. You've set the bar very high for the students who will follow you in the years to come. Now, for one second, uh, just give me a chance to introduce you to the eight individuals who served as your judges. They are Dr. Wendy Castanell, Jamie Grimes, Sarah Marshall, Cassandra Palmer, Charlotte Wurzanowski, all of whom are on the art faculty at the University of Alabama. Then we have Carson Grubaugh, who serves on the art faculty at Shelton State, and my own colleague, Dr. Deborah Patterson, who serves on the education faculty here at Stillman College. Four of them, Jamie Grimes, Carson Grubaugh, Wendy Castanell, and Deborah Patterson, are able to join us this evening. And Drs. Castanell and Patterson have graciously agreed to serve as our moderators. And I also want to let you know that this website is where your submissions will live. And so they're going to provide a platform to reach the next generation while simultaneously gathering and lifting all voices. We have the good fortune this evening to hear directly from this talented group of young people who will speak about their work in alphabetical order. And with that, I turn the program over to our essay moderator, Dr. Deborah Patterson. And, and, and Dr. Patterson, before you start, let me let me just say one other thing. Uh, again, this has been kind of driving over a road and paving it at the same time because we've never done this before. And initially, we thought about, um, as Dr. Wheeler said, just kind of the Tuscaloosa area in terms of students. But we opened this thing up, and we'll do this in the future statewide. So we've got students on this call from all over the state of Alabama. And it's just so impressive. So uh, this group is, as, as he said, this is the pioneering group. Uh, we will use this model going forward and this will be a statewide competition from now on. And uh, it may get even broader than that because just the submission was just outstanding. So uh, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to kind of um, make that point. Um, Dr. Patterson, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Good evening, and thank you, Dr. Pruitt and Dr. Wheeler. It's been my pleasure to serve as, the, um, as an essay judge for this contest. And I'm equally excited to meet, albeit virtually, the gifted students behind the work. Uh, each student had a different approach to the topic of realizing the dream, uh, justice for all, but each one was equally interesting and compelling. Uh, we will begin with the essay written by Jay Carter, a senior at Ramsey High School. Jay used the medical field as the um, area she explored justice for all. Jay? Good evening, everybody. Um, as she said, my name is Jay Carter and I do at in Ramsey High School. Uh, my essay is based on the research that I've done on the quality of health care that minorities receive, uh, which sparked my interest in going to the medical field in the hopes of making a difference in my community. So I'll begin reading my essay, which is titled My Purpose Through Inequality. Dreaming is a state in which you can imagine a false reality where nothing is what it seems. This false reality is a place where we can escape the tra tragedies of today and think about the future. Dream about the life that we deserve. Dreams disappear in the blink of an eye. The dreams of young people of color slip through the crack of society. Survival becomes the only thing in sight. Though it shouldn't be like that, justice becomes the dream. Justice for all means that everyone, no matter the color of one's skin, sexual preference, or gender, deserves the chance to achieve the unimaginable. Obstacles make success sweeter, and justice is not an obstacle. It's a brick wall meant to stop us from succeeding. For me, dreaming about my future and the impact that I could have on my community fuels me towards success. Retaining knowledge about inequality within the medical field filled my desire into going to nursing. 
Dr. Daniel Williams, one of the first physicians to perform open heart surgery. Patricia Beth was a pioneer in the treatment and prevention of blindness. Black people are staples in the medical field and continue to contribute to the research for the benefit of all. If we truly want to see the development of society, then we have to stop racial inequality on all accounts. The healthcare system is broken all around due to faulty teachings, systematic racism, and unaffordable healthcare. Knowledge is the key to many situations in life, but you have to be open to learning. I don't know nearly everything about the healthcare system, but I have come up with ideas for eliminating a racial inequality within it, requiring ethics class for everyone following the medical route. These classes will focus on educating the behavior and misconceptions of other races. To prevent misdiagnosis, frequent training should be in place to keep healthcare workers up to date on conditions that might affect certain races. These trainings and classes will help fight racial inequality in the medical field through education. Learning more about the quality of service that affects minority sparked my interest in going to the labor and delivery field. Being an individual of color, seeing my community thrive not only brings me happiness, but it pushes me to make active choices about my career. For me, finding my purpose wasn't as clear. I strive to go as far as, as, I, as I desire to deal with obstacles as they come. My hopes are to become part of the change using my medical expertise to give every patient a fighting chance. Further, my education puts me a step closer to fighting inequality in the medical field and bringing quality medical assistance to my community. With my dedication to education and nursing, I hope I can inspire a girl like me whose path isn't as clear. Say, staying true to my roots and giving back to my community as much as I can are important goals of mine. All that I can dream for is that my community, my peers, and all people get a fighting chance at being who they truly want to be. Thank you. Thank you. Our next essay was written by Jasper Champion, a seventh grader from Tuscaloosa Magnet School. Uh, Jasper's essay reflects on the legal system and his desire to become an attorney. Um, Jasper, aka Jake, um, is playing soccer right now, but we have his representative who will uh, read his essay for us. I'm sorry, he really wanted to be here. He's actually playing soccer for um, Central High School right now, and I hope they're winning. Um, okay, so his essay is called Prosecution of Injustice. Um, so justice to me means equality to all people. There are many types of people, African-American, white, Hispanic, and other cultures. However, justice can't be just for all races. It has to be for religious beliefs, social class, and gender too. Back in the 1800s, African-Americans weren't allowed to vote in America. Today, people from Ecuador, Mexico, El Salvador, and other countries are being treated inhumanely at the border. Despite new laws and policies, George Floyd's death and many others still happen because of racism. Racism still persists today. I have witnessed injustice throughout my middle school life. I used to go to a school where injustice and racism were prevalent. I left that school because I couldn't stand how people behaved. I don't know if people didn't know better or they thought it was a joke, but it doesn't excuse their behavior. We had a mixture of German students and American students at our school. Some American students would, would salute the German students the way they used to in Germany during World War II. The American students thought this was funny and didn't have any empathy towards the German students or anyone that heard these hurtful words. They simply didn't care how they affected people. I did try to speak to these students committing the offense and I spoke with the principal. I think they got detention, but I'm not sure it, it changed the way they thought at all. I felt compelled to say something because I am Jewish. Both my grandfathers fought in World War II. The Germans today live with their past, but I think we should respect our fellow German students. I will work for justice and become a lawyer to help anyone who is being discriminated against. I have already started trying to achieve that goal by getting good grades, studying history and politics and joining the debate team. Uh, one of the law careers I was thinking about is becoming a district attorney. So I can prosecute anyone who does unjust things to others and thinks they are better than someone else. When someone else feels like they are better 
than someone, sorry, than someone else, it often leads to violence. I want to stop that violence before it happens. I will work to fight against injustice and become known for the person who prosecutes injustice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, representing Jake. Um, we will hear from our other writers later, but at this point, I would like to turn the program over to Dr. Castanell. Dr. Pruitt, uh, is Dr. Castanel on the call? We are checking. I thought that um, I'm not seeing her right now, but I do have the student's artwork ready and I can pull it up or if someone else wants to introduce it um, on the committee, I'm happy with that as well. I'm gonna draft Dr. Wielder, if he's, because uh, no, he may not have seen it. Is there another art judge on the call that's willing to introduce that work? Okay. I know, uh, I know there is someone from Shelter State that's on the call, Dr. Bua. Is he still on the call? Yeah, I don't, I I was not uh, prepared to like have a screenshot of it or anything, if that's what you're. I oh. have, I, um, I do have the screenshots ready. Okay, I don't know what student we're talking about or anything, which is why I'm no, saying I, so. I have an idea. Okay. About, I introduced the student and I'll pull up the artwork. And if you want to say a few things about the artwork, and then yeah, we'll I'm happy to talk about it. I just don't know who we're introducing or That's have okay. an image of it. Yeah. All we're right. Gonna <laughs> we're gonna make it work. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to talk about it though. They were all really great. Perfect. Okay. Well, the first uh, artwork that we are going to talk about is Lillian. Uh, champions artwork. She is a ninth grade student at Central High School. And here is well, I think I think one of the most creative ones um, that we got. It was the one where it like this the symbols won't weren't so obvious to me. Like in a lot of them it was symbols I'm familiar with. So uh, I like this one because it made me like really pick it apart more so you know a lot of things it's um it's nice to communicate like really clearly what you're doing but sometimes it's like okay i get it and then uh when things are like it takes a while to to break them down that's good you keep the the artist or the audience um, more <laughs> engaged that way so i found this one really engaging i spent a lot of time with it awesome and then lillian would you like to share a few words about your work sure i'd love to so this work is um a kind of personal piece because uh, whenever I have a birthday, my mother usually gets balloons. And a couple a, a couple years ago, I started telling her not to because I read that um, that um, that many of the birds are um, are like are like biting on balloons and choking and then falling to death. And um, I didn't want to be the reason why why a bird died so um as you can see in the picture there there are some birds by um, balloons and they have their and they have balloon pieces in their mouth and they look like worms and this um piece uh, means a lot to me and that's all i have awesome thank you so much lillian so we are going to share a, another piece of artwork. And uh, this time we are going to share Rebecca DeCaro's work. Uh, De Rebecca is an 11th grade student at Bryant High. And let me go ahead and get that pulled up. And then 
we will turn it back over and we'll do the same thing that we did last time. Let's see if I can get out of here. All right, can everyone see that? Uh, I'm assuming you wanted me to make a comment on each one. Sorry. Yeah, I think if we follow that same format, we'll be in good shape. Okay, sorry, I didn't. I didn't know that that was going to be part of this. So I didn't have statements prepared. Um, uh, yeah, this was another one that I I liked. The thing I liked about this most is it it does have like a very recognizable symbol in it with Lady Justice, um, but the the symbol has been tweaked with having uh, the rainbow in the hair. So like the modification of the symbol was really interesting to me. Um, the the technique of the digital art is really interesting to me. Uh, and then um, like like the con the digital combination of like the the illustrated stuff looks like uh, Photoshop work in there combined with the collage elements, um, I think spoke to the theme of the thing. You know, there's a lot of different communities represented there in the collage work. Uh, so yeah, I, I found that one really interesting as well. Thank you. And Rebecca, do you wanna say a few things about what inspired you? Um, sure. So I honestly, it took me a while to figure out what I was going to do. I sat there for like, a few days just going, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm doing. But then I did a previous piece, which was based on like, it was another contest that I did. Like a, it was like a zodiac sign kind of thing and had a lot of hair in it. And when I thought of that piece, I was like, oh, I have an idea off of, as we were saying, like lady justice figure. I was like, okay, that's a very recognizable symbol of justice so there's that bit of it but how do I want to um, bring other things into it and bring more personalization to it so I wanted to instead of like there's a lot of the symbols has like a, a eye wrapping around Lady Justice's eyes and I was like well I have all this hair I can put it in front of the eye so it stays that symbol but it's a little bit more, I guess you could say a little bit more like modern in look, but still keeping a slightly older style dress and a symbol like a balance in her hand. Um, and I wanted to think justice for all um, mean, you know, justice for all over races, over genders, over sexualities, over gender identity and all of that. So I wanted to represent all of those as best as I could. Um, so my immediate thought was with the rainbow hair, I wanted to, as I said, edit the symbol of Lady Justice a little bit. So I thought the rainbow is a very recognizable symbol for the LGBT uh, community. So I thought that was a good way to edit the symbol a little bit. And I also wanted to tie in, in the background a bunch of different types of justice um, like police brutality, injustice and all of that and racism and protests and um, uh, poverty and how people treat people different to, uh, depending on how much money they have and uh, discrimination against people who are gay and all different gender identities. So I kind of tried to include that in the background with um, some new snippets that are very lightly laid over it to create like a newspapery feel, but also just a collage of different images that fit the theme. Great, awesome, awesome job, Rebecca. Um, okay, so we are gonna move on to our third artwork submission. And this third submission is from one of our middle school entries. So this submission is from Kariah Edwards, one of our eighth grade students at Westlawn Middle School. And this is a little big, so let me see if I can zoom out for y'all. There we go. All right, and this is Miss Edwards' work. Uh, yeah, this one's really great. I mean, all of these are really great as well, but yeah, for middle school, this is really awesome. Like, it's a really powerful composition with that fist in the middle and all the bright colors like I found this one very striking and like it yeah it conveys its point very directly um, I also found especially clever uh, how, how the writing was done in the flag you know to get the colors of the flag in there 
um, with all, all of the names. So I thought that was really cool. It gave me like a big, powerful symbol to latch on to and then a lot of little detail to explore. And again, it, clever. I found it clever. Great. And Karai, do you want to say a few words about your piece? Um, hey, I'm Karai, and I got a question. Can I read it off the paper? I would love that, yes. Okay. The inspiration that led me to draw this art piece is due to the daily actions of non-equality and, and injustices happening in our world today. I feel that my piece is playing where we need to be as a nation rather than where we really are. As shown in my picture, dividing the bread, dividing the bread, social justice needs to need to be given to us instead of some, given to all instead of some. Having a voice is important and hopefully this picture will inspire others to speak out instead of speak out against injustices as I have done. This is why I chose this art piece. Great job, Kraya. That is awesome. Um, so now we've, after we've heard from a few uh, pieces of artwork, we are gonna turn it back over to Dr. Patterson and we're gonna look back at our writing pieces. Thank you. Um, our next essay was written by Ash Ashton Javine, uh, a ninth grader at Bryant High School. Uh, his essay reflects obstacles to justice for all and his thoughts on the solutions. I look forward to hearing from you, Ashton. Uh, yeah, I'm Ashton in the ninth grade. I go to Paul W. Bryant High School. Uh, so the way I came up with like how I was going to make this essay was I just sat down with Rom and I looked at it. And what I decided to do was to just write about how we could realize that dream, like what's in the way and how we could get there. So uh, now I'll go, on ahead. I'll go ahead and start reading. <clears throat> how America can reach true equality. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream was that one day all Americans would be equal to one another. Today, we are much closer to realizing his dream than we were during his life, but we still have a long way to go because the next part of our journey to achieving his dream requires that America reaches true racial equality as a country. The biggest obstacle that keeps America from reaching true equality is systemic racism. We will never be able to reach Dr. King's dream until systemic racism is no more. Systemic racism is a form of racism that is deeply embedded in our society. The in systemic racism is the culprit behind the mass incarceration of minorities. The incidents of police brutality that we see all too often on the news are the direct results of systemic racism. Unfortunately, the task of ending systemic racism will be extremely difficult. To do that, we would have to detach our society from its racist roots because many of these issues have been around for several generations. National budget changes that allocate more funding to education and social services, especially in low-income communities, by taking away funding for prisons and using a small portion of the defense budget would be largely beneficial to the cause. Major police forms would also need to take place in order to bring an end to systemic racism. Additionally, racial profiling must come a thing of the past. In order for this to happen, everyone in America must acknowledge and confront their implicit biases and do everything in their power to rid themselves of these biases. To the affirmation steps, America can overcome the issue of systemic racism. Even after the problem of systemic racism is solved, there's still much more to do. Xenophobia, homophobia, and intolerance as a whole will need to be conquered by the human race in order for us to reach true equality. Unfortunately, this task is easier said than done. Our society would have to break away from the many injustices and discriminations that allowed it to be built in the first place. For this to happen, we must overcome all forms of discrimination. We will have to push for legislation in support of LGBTQ rights. We must urge our governments to welcome immigrants and refugees to this country instead of turning them away or detaining them. We must look within ourselves and confront our implicit biases, and we must teach future generations to do this as well until humanity reaches a place we're treating all people equally and with respect is second nature and not deliberate effort, not a deliberate effort. <clears throat> Once equality becomes an innate aspect of our society, then we can say 
we have achieved Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. This could all come to pass within 50 years or it could take several centuries. It all depends on the actions of the human race from here on. I hope we reach Dr. King's dream sooner rather than later. Thank you, Ashton. We will um, hear from our final two writers at the end of the program. Now we'll go back to the art um, submissions. Great, thank you, Dr. Patterson. And so our next art submission is coming up from Emerald Leatherwood, a sixth grader at West Lawn Middle School. Uh, yeah, this one really surprised me, especially given the grade that the student was coming from. I see just like, like so much skill in the faces and then, you know, another like really clear commendable message in this one um, that, that's like, you know, this is exactly what we're looking for. But I was, yeah, this one really, I mean, especially the, the face up top, I, I found that like so well done really blew my mind the age of the student here. Emerald, and if you want to share a few words about your art, you can. I'm scrolling and I'm not sure if we have Emerald with us actually. Okay, that is okay. We are going to move on to our next artwork piece then. Let me check the chat really quick. Yes, awesome is right. So our next piece of artwork is from Cameron Lewis. And Cameron Lewis is a ninth grader at Central High School. Um, this I thought was like the most complex one in terms of meaning. Uh, I really liked it. Like this was another one where like I understand the symbols, but it's not so like directly obvious to me. I can I can spend time with it and um, time unwrapping the, the symbols in there. I also thought it was a really compelling composition. It's a bit decentered. It has that frame around with some, you know, some pieces breaking out of the frame, some frame uh, pieces contained by the frame. Um, so yeah, I, I thought this was a really successful piece. I, another one that I st would stick with for a long time. And I know I was talking with Cameron earlier. So Cameron, if you want to share some thoughts about this piece, you are more than welcome. Okay, so I'm Cameron. I'm 15 years old. I go to Central High School. Um, I'm in the ninth grade. Um, this art piece I drew, I drew, tried to draw different hands that were like entangled and vines and roots. I wanted to show that everyone was alike in one way or the other and rather than different. And even if they do have different skin colors and backgrounds, they're all the same. That is great. Thank you, Cameron. Okay, and we are gonna keep on with our artwork. Our next piece of artwork is coming from Amon Mills. Amon is a seventh grader at the Alberta School of Performing Arts. Let me zoom out for you. Uh, th this is another one that really surprised me. Um, the like the I I mean most of these are surprisingly young students, so that's really cool. Um, the the work done on the earth there, I thought it was like really well done. Um, and again, compositionally, I found this one really impressive. It's, it's a dangerous composition in, in a sense. It's like uh, potentially out of balance, but it maintains its balance. And then I also like that it's, it's referencing, you know, current situations as like it covers the theme, but it also covers um, how, how that theme is playing out today in reference to the situation with COVID. So I thought that was a good twist on it. It's another one where the symbols tweaked a little bit. So I, I like that quite a bit. Thank you. And Aman, I know I saw you on the call. So if you want to say a few words, you can do so. I'm in seventh grade. So my, the piece, the artwork is named Angel in the Sky. And inspiration I got from it 
was to demonstrate hope during the pandemic. With the theme realizing the dreams of justice, I thought of how everyone is not treated fairly in the world, especially during the pandemic. Just like many civil rights activists, I hope that that every day justice will be served. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. And our next artwork is coming from Akila Mims, another student from Westlawn, and Akila is in sixth grade. Oops, let me. Uh, yeah, I like this one quite a bit, too. I like the, the face in the middle constructed, you know, it's like split into four constructed out of, um, you know, it's showing multiple ethnicities and like multiple personalities almost all coming together to form one. Um, I think that like strikes right at the heart of the idea of like justice for all and moving forward as, you know, like a, a common goal for everyone. Um, I, I like that symbolism of the face quite a bit. Great. And Akila, if you want to say a few words. I made this art because I wanted to make a difference in the world to tell everybody that all lives matter and not just, I know people going around say all black lives matter, but black lives do matter, but at the same time, all lives matter. And I just wanted to make a difference in the world or at least make history in this world. Thank you, Akila. perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Dr. Patterson and she is gonna share our final submissions. Okay, so the final two um, submissions. Uh, first of all, the next one, essay was written by Sunny Shin, a seventh grader at Tuscaloosa Magnet School Middle. And um, Sunny refers to Dr. King's letter from the Birmingham jail and also some recent publications that illustrate his thoughts. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, Sunny. Um, so when I go on TV, right, and I see all the articles saying, you know, racism is bad and like the wage gaps between African-Americans and white Americans. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, that's not enough information. Like, I, I want to know why racism is a thing in the United States. So I did some research and uh, I wrote it in my essay. So my essay is called American Dream. And I'll just read it. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. It has been 60 years since Dr. King pointed this out in his letter from the Birmingham City Jail. It has been 20 years since Thomas Jefferson wrote all men are created equal in our Declaration of Independence. Yet, is, yet it is 2021 and we are still arguing over whether your skin color or my skin color deserves more respect as a human being. Our current focus should be on climate change, education and global issues. I should not turn on TV and see Black Lives Matter protests, mass shootings and hate crimes every single day. It has gotten so bad that jokes of stereotypical privileged whites named Karen are widely known and prevalent in pop culture. America where it stands leaves a, uh, a lot to be, a lot of things to be desired. Improvement has have been made so far, according to Business Insider, Hispanics and African-American employment rates, which were historically much lower than white Americans, have been steadily increasing by 1% annually for the past 15 years. Despite those improvements, African-Americans member of Congress have struggled to be represented. The 2018 midterm elections saw the most diverse Congress ever with only 57 of 533 Congress members being African-American. While systemic racism can be attributed to many factors, one root cause is African-Americans not receiving quality K-12 education. 15% of African-American students from households led by an adult with a high school diploma finished college, whereas 25% of white students from that type of household finished college. This shows that African American children are much likely are much less likely to move into a higher income bracket and educational degree than their parents than white Americans. This causes higher wage gaps and occupational inequality between African Americans and white Americans. People look up to the United States as a sanctuary where all people and religions thrive. The American dream motivates people from all corners of the world 
to work backbreaking labor and immigrate to America, escape from poverty, persecution, and better quality of life. An important part of the American dream is providing children with better education and an economic position. But this dream is less attainable to African Americans. My parents are immigrants who worked hard to put me in America, a place where they think will bring the best out of me and give me a world of opportunity. They should not have to worry about if I get attacked tomorrow because I'm Asian. As Gandhi once said, an eye for an eye will only make the world blind. Dr. King wrote in his letter from Birmingham jail, in any nonviolent campaign, there are four basic steps. Collection of the facts to determine whether injustices exist, negotiation, self-purification, and direct action. It will not be achieved overnight, but together we can improve the school experience so that more people, Black, White, Asian, and others, are encouraged to finish school and attend college to realize their dreams. Thank you, Sunny. Our final essay is written by Asia Wright, a 12th grader at Smith Station High School. Um, one of the things that Asia did was she um, showed differing uh, views, views that affect the dream and then the purpose of um, justice for all. Asia? Good afternoon. My name is Asia Wright and I'm in 12th grade and I attend Smith Station High School in Smith, Alabama. And my inspiration for this essay was just realizing that this world has so many injustices and it could be solved through so many solutions. So I will read my essay that's entitled Realizing the Dream Through Justice for All. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you. Realize a dream is fulfilling your promise from God. Justice for all is a dream for all. As we fulfill God's promise, purpose, and plan for our life, we must be just and conscious of how we treat others. Realizing the dream through justice for all is treating others with respect, speaking out when injustice occurs, and knowing the power of self-worth. It is reasonable to believe that all people should be treated with respect, and it is also reasonable to believe that in order to get respect, you must show yourself as respectable. Justice is defined as the quality of being fair and reasonable. Justice for all begins at an early age, but, in, but somehow in a dream is not clear when we hear and see different messages in the world. In school, we are taught if you see something, you should say something and that character counts. Treating other, others with respect is a core value that is sometimes forgotten and we need to remember that justice for all is relevant for all. I have been a part and witnessed a modern day civil rights movement. My generation uses social media to expose the unrest and injustices in our world today. Movements that have taken our social media that have made a significant impact on our views regarding justice for all include Black Lives Matter, Asian hate, voter suppression, voter suppression political alliances, and other significant issues. Justice for all is still a dream that has not reached realization in the lives of many people, but can be brought by light by self, brought to light by self-worth. I believe that self-worth and re respect for others are entwined. When an individual realizes their self-worth, understanding characteristics will show, outstanding characteristics will show. They will respect themselves and respect others. They will understand that all we all have a purpose and plan in life and opportunities for happiness and success should be available for everyone in a just and fair manner. Dreams cannot be fulfilled if opportunities are unfairly denied. Realizing the dream through justice for all can be seen in many ways, such as treating others with respect, speaking out when injustice occurs, and knowing the power of self work. Significant legislation has been passed to support justice for all, some passed over 100 years ago. In Dr. Martin Luther King's speech, I have a dream, he stated, the glory of God shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Asia. And I want to thank all of the ones that participated in the essay contest. Thank you, Dr. Patterson. And thank you again, everyone who participated. My name is Lane McClellan. I'm the director at the Crossroads Civic Engagement Center. And we are here at the University of Alabama as part of the Realizing the Dream Committee, but also, as you know, this is part of a greater consortium with Shelton State and Stillman College. Um, I wanted to use this moment now, if we could, to 
uh, invite the judges who are present with us tonight. I know Dr. Patterson, you're here, and uh, Carson Grubaugh, and Jamie Grimes, and maybe Cassandra Palmer, if you're all here. Um, we'd like to just give you a minute to share any concluding thoughts you have on what it was like to participate in this, to view the submissions, what you learned maybe in this process from the students. And I'll just invite you to unmute yourself as you're ready and share that. It gave me hope to read the different essays and to see um, that our younger generation sees the problems, but they also see solutions to the problems. And that was very um, profound to me. And I thoroughly enjoyed reading each and every essay. Thank you, Dr. Patterson. Is there anything else any of the other judges would like to share about your own experience from being a part of this contest? Yeah, I mean, I was, like I said, I was really impressed. Like, I, I'm just inspired by the this next generation of artists coming up, a little bit scared by how good y'all are. <laughs> There's competition coming at me, but I like that. Um, I love the messages and everything. Uh, I, I loved also, like, the diversity of the messages, like different people were coming at it from different angles. And I think that's an important part of this, uh, you know, the whole theme is, um, that's one of the types of diversity that, that we have to encourage. And so I love seeing that in the submissions and that was fantastic too. Thank you. Any of the other judges would like to share? We just wanted to give you this opportunity if you're available to um, share any concluding thoughts. Yeah, I, um, I was able to review a lot of the art submissions and really appreciated being included in the process. I felt that there was a lot of creativity and unique work that was being shared. And it comes from just such a warm place at a dark time. I feel like this has just been a very refreshing process for me to personally experience what these students contributed. And I was just honored to be involved across the board. It was just a very positive thing. So I appreciate it. I mean, everybody keeps saying thanks to everybody that's contributed, but uh, it makes just such a difference. I don't know, I, I don't wanna talk too long, but it was, it was wonderful. Oh, important, important to say it. Thank you. And if there are any other judges on the call, I just want to give you the opportunity, but not put you on the spot. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. My job was very hard. Um, I caught myself getting very emotional looking at the artwork because uh, it was just beautiful um, and it touched my heart. So um, we got some, the talent, uh, just in the, the contest that the future is, is bright. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, thank you. I believe that's everybody. Is there anyone else? Well, let me say again, judges, thank you so much. Um, this would not have been possible uh, without the part that you played. Uh, and um, it was really special again to hear your concluding thoughts about uh, what you've learned in the process. I think that's what's been amazing throughout the whole evening is what we're all learning about how to think and look forward and, and to be encouraged and to, and to receive the hope um, that you're all sharing, all the students have shared with us. Um, we especially also wanna thank the two who served as moderators tonight, Dr. Patterson as the uh, essay moderator and Carson Grubaugh, man, pitching in. How about that? That was amazing. And uh, as if you had prepared every word, because it really did help me understand the art better. So thank you again for doing that. Well, it was, uh, it has been a grand evening. And um, as Dr. Pruitt and Dr. Wheeler said at the beginning, this grew out of an effort to find some way to continue to, to even virtually uh, celebrate um, what we know to be the, the legacy of Dr. King and, and the dream that we all should be continuing to realize. At the time, we didn't really, you know, it was just an idea. And now I realize after this evening, this is something we should have been doing all the time. This has been inspirational. Uh, it has been a way for us to re-articulate what the task ahead is, and to the students, I know I can't see you all in each way, but let me say tonight, you have given us the vision for what it means to realize Dr. King's dream today and for the next generations. So we're so grateful to you. 
Well, our evening is concluding now. And um, on behalf of the Realizing the Dream Committee, I want to, again, thank the students. Congratulations for what you've shared and what you will continue to do in this world. We wanna thank all of you out there who supported them in this process. I know there are parents, there are teachers, there are principals, there's a whole network of support out there for you. And we hope that you will um, continue to thank them for what they're doing every day in your life. But also those of you who are out there, uh, remember what good you've done. Haven't you done great things by bringing these students to us? Everyone who's been on the call tonight, this has been a grand night. As Dr. Wheeler said, we have connected in ways that uh, are important. We've seen each other and, and realized that we're, um, we're the new dream. So we wanna thank you all and remind you that as you uh, move through the next months and years even, that we win, you can go to our website regularly. Uh, it's dream.ua.edu. And these submissions will be housed there. Um, you can continue to also learn more about upcoming Realizing the Dream events there. Well, Whitney and Danielle, if I haven't forgotten anything, I will say good night. And again, thank you all, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you and good night to everyone. Right. Thanks. It was a pleasure. I look forward to next year. Yeah. Absolutely. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you now. Awesome. <laughs> Remember these students' names. We will see them again, I guarantee you. Yes. I hope Bye. so. <laughs>